Former President Obama resurfacing today on the radical left-wing campus of Stanford University just outside San Francisco. Obama giving a speech that touched on a number of subjects, including big tech and what he considers disinformation, which in the context of what we learned about the Obama administration and 2016 Clinton campaign in recent months is just so terrifically rich. People like Putin, and Steve Bannon for that matter, understand it's not necessary for people to believe this information in order to weaken democratic institutions. You just have to raise enough questions, spread enough dirt, plant enough conspiracy theorizing that citizens no longer know what to believe. <laughs> it's so good. This from the man who knew that Hillary Clinton designed a scheme to draw attention away from her own email scandal by framing Donald Trump as a Russian asset. CIA Director John Brennan informed Obama of this very disturbing scheme in the summer before the 2016 election. That wasn't just disinformation from his former Secretary of State, but disinformation intended to alter the course of the Western world. Where was he then on the topic? We learned this week from the CIA, uh, that the CIA, I should say, knew from the start that Russiagate was not technically plausible. They knew that it was very likely user-created. So if the CIA knew, Obama and the White House knew, effectively Washington knew, that Trump, Russia, all of that was a scam. But here's how they talked about it on TV. With him, all roads lead to Putin. He will not, he will, I don't know what the Russians have on the president. Donald Trump is an unwitting agent of Russia's Vladimir Putin. Do you believe the president right now has been an agent of the Russians? Yes. I think there's plenty of evidence of collusion or conspiracy in plain sight. Whether Donald Trump himself is just uh, a puppet for the Kremlin. What could possibly cause President Trump to put the interests of Russia over those of the United States? These people are so, so pathetic. It boggles the mind. Please tell us more about disinformation, Mr. Obama. Please tell us more. Here's some dangerous disinformation that's completely true, by the way. Hunter Biden's blatantly corrupt behavior with every day that passes, the Biden family is viewed as more and more corrupt in the eyes of the American people. Astonishing here, the first family's corruption has compromised the White House in the eyes of two thirds of Americans of all political stripes, two thirds of Americans, according to a new Trafalgar poll. Remember how Obama's party and their media lapdogs treated this disinformation story? A really fishy story. The Post claimed that the emails were found on a laptop computer that was brought to a repair shop in Delaware in the spring of 2019. The FBI is now investigating whether those alleged Hunter Biden emails are actually connected to a larger foreign intelligence operation. They may be related to a foreign intelligence operation. Foreign intelligence operation. Foreign intelligence. Foreign intelligence. Foreign intelligence operation. Please tell us more about disinformation. More than 50 former Intel officials signed a letter swearing the laptop story was fake. Rudy Giuliani's name was dragged through the dirt, and in the end, of course, it was all completely true. Please lecture us more about the dangers of disinformation. We need it. You, only you can save us, Obama. Only you and the Democrats can save us from this dangerous world of disinformation. <laughs> it's too good. Interestingly enough, right as she finds herself in the midst of a massive investigation into one of the most toxic political hoaxes of all time, Hillary is also screaming about disinformation. This tweet popping up this week. For too long, tech platforms have amplified disinformation and extremism with no accountability. The EU is poised to do something about it. It goes on from there. It's very clear what they're doing. Create a monster so scary, so threatening to democracy, as they say, that it justifies the horrible things that they've done, justifies their own actions that have actually threatened democracy. What Hillary did in 2016 very much threatened democracy. Why do you think they bring up January 6th every single day? They're projecting. They're nervous. 
and they should be. The Durham investigation is legit, and each day that passes, things look even worse. And the media cannot paint this as politically charged as much as they want to, because, of course, nothing leaked in the fall of 2020 to help Donald Trump. The investigation has been watertight. It's not political. It's legit, and everybody knows it. And they're friggin' nervous. Another interesting moment from Obama's speech today came when he touched on just how easily information of all kinds is spreading these days. 40 years ago, if you were a conservative in rural Texas, you weren't necessarily offended by what was going on in San Francisco's Castro district because you didn't know what was going on. <laughs> For some, such exposure may be eye-opening, perhaps even liberating, but others may experience that exposure as a direct affront to their traditions, their belief systems, their place in society. So people in Texas seeing what's going on in San Francisco, that's not good for them either. You can see obviously they have a problem with this. He doesn't like that. It's a statement that speaks perfectly to what we saw this week. Washington Post muckraker Taylor Lorenz doxing the creator of Libs of TikTok, who is a young Brooklyn realtor who simply displays just how vile the far left in this country has become. She just uses their own words and shows you what they do on social media. That's it. A woman who offers no opinions of her own, just showing the country how despicable hyper-liberalism is becoming, how toxic it is. She just retweets it. She takes exactly what they do and she just puts it in front of more people. That's it. Obama, as well as Lorenz and all Democrats, know how dangerous it is to show Americans the sickness inside of their party. Now, they're all for exposing the radical wing nuts in the Republican Party. They love that. That's patriotic to do that. But when you do it to them, that's a dangerous move. Could be considered disinformation, should certainly be controlled by big tech and regulated by the federal government, which is what Obama was pushing for today. That's dangerous. Can't have that. Can't have people in Texas and maybe states like Georgia or Arizona and swing states seeing just how crazy their party has become. Can't have that. Can't have that. The truth is there is movement on the left to commandeer the raising of your kids. And that's what they're really worried about. They're worried about people seeing that. The left no longer sees parents as fit to control really any aspect of their kids' lives. It should all come from the state. Here's MSNBC's newest star talking about just that. What about Sally? Sally has two moms. Or I'm not sure if I'm a girl or a boy. I mean, these are kids who are experiencing, um, you know, these moments in their lives. I also think that these are not, there is not a big record of there being either sex education or extensive gender identity education in these schools. And this is creating a problem or a political cudgel about an issue that I don't think exists. If you listen to the way they talk about kids, you would think that they have no family at all, that children are getting everything that they need of life from teachers at school, which is just so backwards in so many ways. Kids spend a very small amount of their time at school. Most of their time is with their family. And that's the way it should be. And that's where they need to learn a lot of this, not from a teacher at a school, not from some randomly assigned teacher at a school that might have an agenda. And as they scream that disagreeing with the position that Saki just mentioned is bigoted. The LA Times reporting on the story of a transgender psychologist who's concerned by the sharp rise in teens and kids coming out as trans or non-binary. The doctor herself is trans. The doctor, Erica Anderson, bravely believes that many trans kids are actually not trans at all, but rather falling under peer pressure or influenced by social media, maybe pressured by teachers with an agenda. She believes kids are being pushed through medical treatments, puberty blockers, plastic surgery to affirm an identity that they don't actually hold. A left-wing society that takes a child's confusion and tries to nurture it into a radical decision because it satisfies a morbid agenda. How scary is that? 